Who here drove here? Understanding mechanics well enough to be able to fix it yourself. So we know that we only play the game two ways, on platform or off platform. When we're on platform, we have to do what, Kyle? What four things? Short stride, stand tall. Loud like a quarterback. Short stride, stand tall, chase the hit, finish violent. Good. When we're off platform, Keegan, we gotta do four things. You know what they are? You gotta stand tall, swing your opposite leg, yep. violent finish. Yep. Chase your hips in and, there too. Yeah, or, you know, load your hips in there too. We gotta do four things. So if we throw a crappy ball, it's not dang it. Oh man, you're the worst. You always do this. It's just I did one of those four. I didn't do all four of those things. We throw the ball with trajectory. Or we throw touch balls. Okay. We gotta do two things. Trajectory and finish. You gotta have trajectory and finish. So part of being a triple threat on the physical side is knowing how to fix things yourself. One other part of it is knowing what to put in your body, and what not to put in your body. Another part of it is knowing. Um, exactly what you need to be doing from a training regimen. We've talked in a lot of individual conversations about that. A mental part of being a triple threat. We talked about defenses, understanding what they are doing on defense. We talked about on offense, how do we learn an offense? There's a process for it, right? We talked about uh, when it comes to confidence um, on the mental side of it, and how to process information quickly and when we're ready to add more information. So on the mental side, the, the whole camp started with how to take notes. And then on the emotional side, we talked about a lot of things. On the sports psychology side of it, we talked about positive, neutral, and negative mindsets. We want to stay in that neutral mind zone and go back and forth between positive and neutral. We want to stay away from that negative zone. Right? We also talked about success and adversity. We talked about how do we build our, our quarterback. Right? If it's a house, how do we build it? We talked about the foundation is confidence. And the structure, the part that builds it, stuff like consistency, work ethic, routine, process and discipline. We talked about the roof that weathers the storm, that's being success and adversity and how we handle both of those things. And I can promise you, however good you are at handling success and adversity is how good you're gonna be. If you're really good at handling adversity and you don't know how to handle success, I can promise you you're not gonna be that good. You're not gonna reach your potential. So we also talked a lot about reps. Reps is not just, you know, we're gonna get eight reps and 10 of this and 12 of those. What it is, is every rep is an opportunity to get better or worse, every throw. So when we built our warm up, we got four things we're gonna do from here on out when we warm up. We're gonna start here, rotating with our feet in cement, because I get to really work on standing tall and finishing. That's two of the four things. Then we're gonna do three pumps and a throw. So I get to work on chasing my hip and violently finishing. And I get to work on short front stride. We're gonna go into Cutler and rock into Cutler. And we're gonna get a chance to really work on our hip, violent finish and stand tall. So we're gonna build a warm up so from an emotional standpoint. We're actually building things and treating warm ups now like a rep, as opposed to just kind of warming up and talking to the guy next to you. Cool? And so when it comes to success and adversity, I have two, I have an example of success and adversity. <laughs> Sam Darnold, who went to high school here, it's the first game I ever saw him play, he was playing against DeSoro his sophomore year. And this is a kid who, had a bunch of offers and didn't even have a social media account until like a sophomore year in college. Went to USC, didn't play, got redshirt his freshman year, competed for the starting job as a redshirt freshman, didn't get it. And then when he got a chance, that third game of the season, he just has kind of dominated ever since. He just got the third pick in the draft with the Jets and he's just back to the bottom of the totem pole and he's just handled success incredibly well. He's remained really humble. You guys got a chance to watch Cade spin it today. Really good to your left, bro. Um, but here's a guy who's been through as much adversity as anybody I've been around, and this guy is one of the absolute all-stars when it comes to handling adversity. So Cade and his father Mike, you know, uh, gonna say a few words here. And for me, when I was younger, I always looked up to certain players. So my brother was a guy I always looked up to. I was 
really young, I looked up to Troy Aikman. Looked up to a guy named Rob Johnson, you guys never probably may or may not have heard of. So I had a lot of guys I looked up to. As I get older, it's a lot of these young guys, some of you guys that I look up to. Some of the guys I train. There's certain things about Deshaun Watson I really look up to. But I'll let Cade go ahead and take it from here, because this is a guy that I've been looking up to for a while. Success and adversity is going to inevitably strike us. For some of us, it might be an injury, it might be a bad team, it might be a coach, it might be daddy ball we're dealing with, whatever it is. It might be the, the can't believe nobody got, gave you a scholarship. Just trained a guy who went number seven overall to the Buffalo Bills who never received a scholarship. Told his mom on International Signing Day he was still going to be a first round pick as she was crying. Turns out he's a first round pick. Get really, really good at handling success and adversity because I can guarantee you it's coming. And the longer you play, the higher the highs get and the lower the lows get. Parents, that's why the logo is what it is. It really is a QB journey. It's just up and down and you're literally just at where you're at. And if it's the highest moment in your life, Deshaun Watson's talking about MVP, he's talking about Super Bowl, Moses knee out in practice. And all he talked about the next morning on the phone was how awesome this Super Bowl run's gonna be this year. It's the only thing he talked about on the phone. He wanted to know dates when he could start training again, when he'd be able to start throwing again, how much more time he's gonna get to break away from everything and study the playbook. Because as soon as he blew his knee out, he started thinking about a uh, uh, world championship this year. The, higher, the further you go, the higher the highs and the lower the lows. So at this point, get really, really, really good at handling both of those things. Cool? Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, coaches. This was great.